Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's episode of Flick News. I first just want to say happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there, human and fur baby alike. I hope you had a wonderful day. For those of you who are new here, this is a segment that we do on Flick Direct where I provide you with some movie news that has been released in the previous week. So grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and let's get this started. Are you a Watchmen fan? I am. And I'm sure you have enjoyed at least one of the versions that's out there, whether it be the TV show, well, HBO, um, the movie that Zack Snyder did, or the original comic book that was written by Alan Moore and David Gibbons. I personally like them all, um, but I am definitely more of a fan of the comic book, and I probably have to say that's one of the top fiction comics that's out there. I think it's number one. There are some really good ones out there, but really, if you haven't read the comic, I highly recommend doing so because the movie and the show weren't really able to give you a lot of detail, I guess you would say. And they had to take some creative liberties because again, you can only fit so much into a show or a movie. I mean, we've discussed that multiple times, so I don't have to tell you for the billionth time. But one of those liberties was when Zack Snyder changed the ending of the movie. Um, spoilers, it had to do with a mutant squid, but I won't give too much away on that. But it is a difference. Now, for those fans out there, I have some amazing news. They are actually doing two animated movie adaptations of The Watchmen. And it's going to be so great. We have a trailer, which obviously I'm going to share with you. So be sure to go to the description and click on the link so you can watch it. There's no official date when these two adaptations will be coming out. However, there has been some chatter that the first animated movie will be out towards the end of this year. And then, of course, early 2025 for the second. So we don't really have long to wait for this movie. I'm very excited about it. Um, I really enjoyed the trailer, um, and I hope you will too. So take a watch and let me know what you think. Okay, so I told you anytime I got any information about the Knives Out movie Wake Up Dead Man, I would let you guys know. Don't get super excited. It's just a teeny tiny little, you know, taste of what's to come. But I told you I'd share it. So here we go. Ryan Johnson, who's the director, went to Twitter. Um, uh, X really can't stop saying Twitter. I prefer Twitter. Anyway, he went to Twitter and basically gave us a shot of Detective Blanc, a.k.a. Daniel Craig, on day one of filming. And it is... A black and white photo. Well, here, let me just show you now. And uh, Detective Blanc is sporting some long hair. I'm kind of digging it. Now again, it's just a sneak peek. However, I feel like more and more is going to come out, maybe on Instagram, maybe we'll get some reels behind the scenes. But I cannot wait until we get a trailer or something else. I want to see everybody in their costumes and just kind of learn a little more about the movie, but not giving too much away. Because if the trailer gives everything away, you don't really want to see the movie. We've seen that happen more times than not. So stay tuned. And when we get any more information, I will let you guys know. Next, I have some more exciting news for you. I have another trailer. I know. But 99% of the time, I'm giving you tidbits of stuff. So please allow my excitement when I can actually share 30 seconds of a movie with you. Anyway, this movie is called The Instigators, and it stars Matt Damon. It's an action comedy that's based out of Boston. How fitting. And it also co-stars Casey Affleck. Again, how fitting. Anyway, it follows these two criminals who are reluctantly attempting a heist to basically take down a corrupt politician. It sounds really crazy. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and who doesn't like, you know, some heists gone wrong? You know something's gonna go wrong. And it kind of sounds like they might be getting the band back together. So I wonder if maybe another Affleck 
might be making an appearance, not starring in it, but maybe we'll see Ben. Who knows? We'll just have to, you know, check in, stay tuned and see what happens. The Instigators is actually being released on Apple TV only. So if you don't have Apple TV, you have more than enough time because it comes out April 2nd of this year. I'm definitely going to sign up. I haven't subscribed to Apple TV yet, but this movie is definitely going to get me to subscribe to that. Although there are a lot of shows on there as well that I really need to watch, but I need for that 30 day window to just be able to sit on my couch and watch them, which that could also be very tiresome, but we'll have to wait and see. If you watch the movie, let me know. I'm really excited to hear what you think about it. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news and be a Debbie Downer, but there's another setback in the Blade movie. Surprise, surprise. How many setbacks is this now? They've been talking about it for how many years? Just pull the plug already. Seriously. I mean, I want another Blade movie. I would like something new. And they just can't get it off the ground. I don't understand what's happening. And you know it's really bad if Wesley Snipes is going to Twitter to throw some shade. And it's, it's pretty funny. So let me, let me just read this to you. I'm going to have to read it on the screen because <laughs> it's pretty funny. Blade. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Folks still looking for the secret sauce, riding snowmobiles and traffic. Kind of rough. Daywalkers make it look easy, don't they? <laughs> you can go on to X and read it. It's also up here. But I just thought I had to share this with you because, again, another setback. It's not great. But, you know, Wesley Snipes made me chuckle a bit. So it kind of eased the pain that it's still not moving forward. Anyway, stay tuned if I hear anything else. Hopefully no more setbacks or who knows, maybe production company, directors, writers change. I don't know. I will keep you posted on what I hear though. So this one's quick. Not so great news since we're already on that downward spiral. Apparently there was a screening for the new Crow movie and it didn't go so well. And that breaks my heart because I just want another good Crow movie and we just, we can't get it. It's kind of like the franchise is cursed. Brandon Lee died. We just can't get another good one. I don't know what's happening, but they just, they just can't get it right. Well, this particular showing went horribly wrong apparently. And even the writer of one of the Crow movies that didn't come out said that if you hear that it's horrible and stupid and I don't know, some other choice words that he used, it's absolutely true. And that was just like a punch in the gut. I mean, look, looking at Skarsgård's face and they had him completely tatted out, I knew it was going to go in the wrong direction in the first place. But, you know, you just kind of hold on to hope, maybe, We'll get something good, but no. It turns out that apparently they're making Eric and Shelly like junkies. And one of them cheats on another. And it's like, if you know the whole premise of this and you're rebooting this, you would never make the two of them junkies. Never. You would also never make one of them cheat on the other because uh, why would you come back to avenge the death of the one that you love if they're cheating on you. It's like, it's not, you don't really get that feel for the characters, right? Like how we did in the original. You love Eric and Shelley together. And it's just a beautiful love story that just goes horribly wrong, horribly wrong. So I'm not having much faith in this. I mean, I'll still watch it, but um, if it comes out, I mean, if it went that bad, it may not even get to the big screen. I don't know. I don't know. Stay tuned if I hear anything else about it or maybe down the road when it finally gets released and we can watch it, we can commiserate, cry a little. Or who knows, maybe they'll make some changes and it'll actually be good. (laughs) Yeah. And finally, 
Apparently there have been rumors going around that James Gunn has selected the new Batman for the Brave and the Bold. I've heard rumors, not any that seem like they would have a leg to stand on, but people are definitely throwing around names who they would like to see, but James Gunn's not having it. He went to X and shut it down and basically said, no, we haven't even begun casting for the DCU Batman, which honestly is the way it should be. He has too much to do with the Superman movie and he needs to focus on that because us DC fans have just been kicked in the cojones, so to speak, uh, when it comes to live action movies. And uh, we would like something that actually works. I'm hoping that James Gunn can bring that to us because a lot of us really just want something that's at least a little like the original Marvel movies. But who knows? It's only time will tell and we'll have to wait. Anyway, like I said, they're still filming Superman, so we really don't have much information on it at this time. But you know the drill. Stay tuned, and when I get that, I will let you know. And with that, this concludes this week's episode of Flick News. Be sure to like and subscribe to both of our channels to get all of your entertainment news. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.